I was talking to Clark about I want to get a, a 29 XLR Cobra with the 858 chip in it, and I want to do it up with five kilocycle spacing. So it'll do 28, like 965 or something like that, up to like 28, 29, 2, 200 and whatever it's going to be, right in the middle of the AN band on 10 meters. Uh, I don't know, maybe you can appreciate that. I don't know. Yeah, but you'd, you'd have to collector mod, like externally collector modulate it to sound like you do now. Otherwise, it's going to be like, I could be one of those annoying guys. It's pretty, it's not bad to collect or modulate them. They make these little um, 10VA Antex, and you only need one of them. They, they make a correct one. You need about, what did I, it, it, you could basically use a one-to-one -one, uh, transformer to collect or modulate one of those with, like, you know, some 50-watt, 30, 50-watt audio amplifier. I think the correct turns ratio that I figured out for a stock Cobra 29, like 5 watts input, was like 1.3 to 1 turns ratio uh, to, you know, high level collector modulate it. Well, that's pretty neat. I really wasn't even thinking along those lines. I just wanted to have a radio that just, just to kind of mess around with it and um, just to have it you know, to occasionally use, and I wasn't really thinking about making it sound good, but um, that's all very interesting, too. Yeah, look at the Antec website. They have, like, a grid there of all their different transformers, and um, you just need... Uh, they, they have the perfect one there. It was like... Uh, I forget what the, the primary and secondary voltage is. Well, the primary is, they're all 115, but the, the secondary voltage, I forget exactly what it was. But they make one that is literally like almost a perfect 1.3 to 1 turns ratio. And then you don't need much. I got, uh, I found on eBay these little PWM Class D audio amplifiers that are like the size of an index card that will modulate the crap out of that thing enough so that you could basically launch the 2078 final right out of it and um, it, it be working good, man. I love tech stuff. I like that. I like that all that tech talk, Billy. That's cool. W2PHO. It's, um, yeah, I should dig out my 138 XLR and that was like a present for like graduation or something, like eighth grade <laughs> graduation. <laughs> I've had it all these years and I've hacked that thing up. And it's, um, I wonder what it would sound like because I, because I know back then I thought it sounded great. I thought I had the best sounding station and I'm sure I didn't do any, anything near like uh, what you're talking about. To it. So um, I wonder. I should I should power that baby up and see what it does. See what it sounds like. In other words. Well, the 138 XLR. Does that have side or slot bucket in it, or is that an AM only? Because a lot of those slot bucket CBs use the Darlington Pear style modulator, and those it's like easier. You don't obviously get nearly the amount of peak envelope power out of them because you know it's it's direct injected to the you know that old Darlington Pear. Um, whereas like you know the running the final in Class C at high level collector modulating it, it just spans harder but if, if it is a slot bucket CB then it's really really easy you just basically feed line level audio into the Darlington pair through a blocking cap and away you go well, it did I have an external uh, jack on that thing so maybe that's what was going on back then I, re I didn't really know what I was doing just messing around looking for it you know a, a spot to inject audio and I found a spot that sounded good, and I left it. And then, so I have like a little um, jack in the back where I could jack in uh, external audio. Um, but I can't remember what I did, so I'd have to actually take a look at it. But very interesting. 
Yeah, you can have fun with CBs, and you can learn a hell of a lot by messing with them. And not a lot of people know that, but ask Clark. With the first time he ever heard me on 75-meter AM, how was my signal, and how did I sound, and what was I running? You know, I obviously didn't learn it from hanging out on 75 meters if you catch my drift. Do you have that uh, in your memory banks, Clark? I can send you the video. Wow. Yep, but I had my externally modulated Johnson Viking 2 ready to go with a good signal and, and good audio. People were asking me if it was a Class E rig, stuff like that. The first time I ever keyed up on 75 meter AM. And like I said, I didn't learn any of that stuff. I didn't put any of that stuff together from hanging out on 75 meters. CB radio. I learned a hell of a lot. Well, that's pretty much where I got all my RF experience early on, too. So I have uh, my 138 XLR's got BCD thumb wheel switches for frequency selection, which I'm not sure if that met the Part 95 requirements or not, but <laughs> it was fun to do. Hey, what's up, fellas? W2, 